Okay, onto the pretty much the finish of this picture. Um, there's some lovely wisps of hair um, sticking out from around the hood here. So, if you look beyond the very light bits, you can see some mid-tone hair just visible in the shadow of the hood. So, I'm going to guess that's greyish. So, I've just been working with various greys here. I've got blue greys and brown greys. And what I've done with my palette here, I've just made a runny puddle uh, with my bigger brush. Now I've got a runny puddle of mid-toned grey, like this. And with my rigger, with the paint nice and runny, I can paint long, thin lines, because this long brush holds sufficient paint to keep a line going, where although you can paint a thin line with a small brush, it runs out of paint quickly, so you end up with a staccato line like that. But with a rigger, you can paint long, sinuous lines. So let's just start flipping a few shapes in to where the, the hair is shaded by the hood. You don't need many. I mean, it's, it's really all about providing clues for people. And then your brain hopefully does best for you. So trying to work in some wispy wispy bits of hair. And it only takes a couple of lines across a simple passage of different darks and lights to create a new space that your eyes are latching onto these bright bits of highlight and the rest is just a supporting cast. Now of course if I put all of these clips together it's not really hours and hours of work. Um, now I do know that internationally renowned portrait artists can spend up to a year on a piece. Um, so I suppose you could look at this and say, well, that's not as fully finished a piece as one of those artists might achieve. But like with all of the paintings and different subjects that I do, which you can have a look at on my website, um, I think that once you observe and get the essentials of something, you can then take it as realistic or as detailed as you wish. Um, and that's where we all become individuals and paint in our own way. But I rather like the simplicity of this, of working with switching the light on, doing the painting, and so that's my pretty much dark grey I've just been using. Let's go up a notch with some more white added. And go a little bit more obvious with some of these brighter coloured hair. Okay, it's catching the light out over this shoulder here. Your wisps catching the light out over this side as the light is skimming across and we've got a, a lock of brighter stuff happening out over the top left which leaves us with the eyes and I've deliberately left those to last because they're incredibly important what I'm going to do first is use my slightly larger synthetic brush with some of this grey that I'm using, which is a kind of mid-tone grey. 
And the biggest mistake you can do is put the whites of the eyes in as white because they're far from it. You can see these little bits of tone here. And I'm just going to look at the eyes and I'm going to see... She's looking pretty much straight at the camera. And if we could see the eyeball, we would see a perfect disc of the iris and a perfect disc of the pupil in the middle of that iris. Um, so, although her lids are crunched down top and bottom, um, the bit that's left, we need to let our brains believe that if we could see all of the iris, it wouldn't make a full circle. Um, so let's look at the quality of the white that's left on this side. And don't forget, the top of the eyeball will be shaded by the top lid. So let's just put a little bit of grey in. Heading down towards the tear ducts, but not going all the way to it. So you can see this edge would form a perfect circle. So that's part of a circle there. Let's work our way around that circle and put a little corresponding bit in the outer part of that eye. Now it's so dark it really doesn't show up, so I'm just going to scuff it off a bit. But the bit that's left is suggesting a circular portion of iris there. Let's come in a little bit tighter to that. And then over this side, let's try and get people looking the same way with uh, each eye. Let's put a little bit of hinted at white of the eye in here towards the tear duct. But still leaving the suggestion that if we could see all of the iris, it would be a perfect circle. Now there's very little white showing on this side of the eye, but I'm just going to put a dab in there. So the little bit of curvature you can see is heading round towards making this what would be part of a circle. So we've got the hint of the eyes in there. Let's just put a very slight hint of colour in there. So I'm going to take some Naples yellow and some ultramarine blue to make up a sort of grey green. And if we could see the irises, there would be a dark band next to the white of the eye. And then we would see a bit of colour, rather like um, a target or... No, a target's a bad thing to talk about with eyes, isn't it? But we want to make sure that we leave the hint of a dark band around the edge and that the hint of the pupil we leave is in the centre and is also part of a circle. Over onto this side, let's just put in a little bit of colour, leaving the top part of the eye shaded. So we've got the hint of two eyes there, and the final part of this, the only pure white that I have on the page, is going to be a couple of highlights on the eye to make them look a little bit glossy and maybe a hint of moisture down at the bottom of the eye too. So this is titanium white. It's the only white I use because it's lovely and bright. And just an offset highlight on each eye. It's enough to give that impression of glossy eye. Let's try a little bit of moisture down on the bottom lid. Just little touches. Right, so obviously I could spend several months more on this, but I hope that gives you the basics of how to achieve just a very casually mapped out portrait in acrylics working from a dark background, progressively up to your highlights. And just remembering about the geometry of the face, the tilt, the eye line, the central axis, block in the darks of the uh, background clothing, and just bring out enough highlight as you need. So, 
check out my website. Um, hopefully in the near future it's going to be populated by downloadable videos of all sorts of subjects because I do paint just about anything you can think of. So this is Marcus Finch signing off. Um, give us a look and uh, see you soon.